How did you meet Hans Wahlberg? I met dear Hans when he had just arrived here in Valsambor, 20 years ago. What was he doing in the region? Oh, he didn't seem to have any particular reason. Always traveling. He stopped off here and there, then left again when the feeling came. What exactly happened in Baranur? An accident in reactor number three. Negligence. Faulty maintenance. What do I know? Anyway, one spark was all it took, and then total chaos. The rare survivors were brought back here to the Valsambor Clinic. So you and Hans decided to build an army of automatons to help all the people who were left behind still stuck in the rubble in Baranur. Yeah. Hans thought that helping the town that had opened its arms to his amusement park was a duty, and we would have managed to do it in the end, too. If only that coward Obo hadn't left our automatons to rust because of his so-called lake monster. The evil monster of the lake. Stories to scare small children with, Miss Walker. Not an excuse for cowardice. Mein Gott. Are you still angry at Captain Obo for abandoning your automatons? Ah, yeah. Hans and I put an awful lot of energy into making them all, you know. We thought of everything. How so? Our automatons were designed to tirelessly go through all the rubble, piece by piece, in search of survivors, administer first aid, and then take them back to the beach so that they could be safely embarked on the crystal. But because of Obo, none of that ever happened. Thank you for your help. Go speak with young Sarah. She could help you. The captain is just there, next to the fireplace. Captain Obo? What do you want? Sit down for a second. Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry to impose, but I actually really... You know, you kind of remind me of someone. The wife of the quartermaster that served on board the Crystal after the war. <gasps> Do you realize he got married to the first cousin of the wife of a machinist? Oh, okay. That's all really interesting. But what I wanted to ask... <laughs> That's a really great story, really. Because did you know? So there. So the guy answers, I don't know nothing, Captain. Turns out he was hiding in the broom closet. <laughs> you hilarious. Irina, the wife of the quartermaster, her name was Irina Malevna. Crazy how much you look like her. Oh, 
Kochi, it's getting late. I have to go. You can finish telling me the story another time, Captain Obo. The lake is haunted by a demon. It's watching me. Waiting! I can feel it. That shape there in the water. What is it? Is everything okay, Kate? Not really. I'd like to ask Captain Obo if the Yukul Caravan can go on board his boat to cross over to Baranur. But I can't get a straight answer. He's completely sloshed. I'm sorry, miss, but I really think you're wasting your time. He's getting drunk again to forget his crimes, like he always does. To forget he wasn't brave the way a captain should be. Can you believe it? In Baranur, he just picked up and abandoned his passengers. And I know. He'll never want to see that cursed place again. I'm not sure that's true, Vlad. Even if he does drink a lot, the captain's a pretty good guy. Say the right thing, and you may be able to convince him. If I'm ever lucky enough to find him sober, even for a moment, I need that drunkard to listen to me. Maybe I can help you with that. I'll make him one of my famous small restoratives. After that, he'll want to sleep for three days, but at least his mind will be clear. You know the captain better than I do. What can you tell me that will help me to convince him? One thing's for sure. He definitely hates himself for abandoning all those people to their fate over there in Baranor. All of those men, women, and children that Grandfather's army of automatons was going to rescue and bring back on board the Crystal. He has the impression nobody here will ever forgive him and... To be perfectly honest, he's not far wrong. Plus, he's also wracked with guilt. So in my opinion, avoid criticizing him. Has Captain Obo taken the crystal out of port since leaving Baranor? He's been far too drunk ever since then for that. And anyway, the port's been closed since the tragedy of Baranor 20 years ago. Do you think the crystal is still in sailing condition after all this time? I'm sure there'll be a few repairs to do, but Obo never stopped keeping it in shape, you know. He loves his boat, despite everything. Do you know why Captain Obo fled Baranor? He must have been completely traumatized by what he saw there. The catastrophe, the victims, and then the radiation. He unloaded the automatons on the beach, but he didn't expect they'd bring the survivors back right then. He just cracked, completely snapped. Full astern and goodbye all. Can you even imagine? Afterwards, he came up with that story of a sea monster appearing and attacking his boat. Yes, the old legend of the monster of the lake. Convenient, isn't it? Who knows what became of the victims and automatons the captain abandoned? No, everybody hates the captain for that. But nobody volunteered to take the helm of the crystal in his place to pick up the survivors. If there are any left in Baranur, they're all dead now, that's for sure. Grandfather says that the automatons would have broken down really quickly with nobody to maintain them. Go see the captain. Sarah will bring you the restorative when it's ready. Poor Captain. Even though his superstitions terrify him, he's obviously dreaming of a second chance.
Take this, Captain. This one's on the house. water on battens the hatches, swamps the deck, and opens the portholes. Hello, uh, miss. My name is Kate Walker, Captain Obo. We met each other earlier. To what do I owe the honor of your presence at the table of the regrettably famous Captain Obo? This is good news, Captain. You're back at the starting block again. You have a new beginning, a new dawn. <laughs> now that's a good show of spirit, Miss Walker. What'll you be having now? It's my round. I'd rather you listen to me. You're my only hope of finding a solution to my problem. <laughs> Do tell me about it, please, Miss. Because the Yukels and their ostriches are stuck here in Valsumbur, it's causing a serious problem among the people in your community. Plus, the nomads have to continue their great journey. Only you, Captain Obo, can defuse the situation by taking them on board the crystal. You're very wrong, Miss Walker. Everybody will tell you that I'm incapable of giving a hand to anyone. Right. Go on. Ignore Obo, the gutless wonder. I took a look at your logbook, Captain. I read what you wrote when you fled Baranor. So in that case, you know what I am, right? I'm damned and rotten to the core. Let me tell you something, Captain. I know that you need to redeem yourself. And I just may be able to help you do that. How in the hell? Take the Yukal caravan to Baranor in the Crystal. The migration must go that way. Baranor? That's impossible. You can't go to there anymore. Never again. Too much happened. Too many died. But also there, in the water, I saw the hellish red eyes of the monster of the lake. Beast as big and long as my boat. Ask your Yukul friends what they think about it. They call it the Kilak, the evil spirit of the lake. The devil guarding the doorway to hell. Captain, I think it's time for you to clear your head of all these fanciful stories designed to scare people. Everywhere in the world where the water is deep, people have come up with legends designed to keep children safe. Come on, get up, Captain Obo. Show me what you're made of. Hmm. Miss Walker, first of all, I have to say that you're an incredibly stubborn woman. I'd even say that you're a real un... Hmm. Anyway, I'll stop there. But I get it. And what am I to conclude from your appraisals? All right, all right. You can get your gang of little savages and board the crystal. I'll take you. Oh, thank you, Captain, really, with all my heart. And thank you on behalf of the Yukels. Oh, but be careful now, Captain Girl. You're not there yet. There are two conditions, and they are negotiable. First, we stop by Narodas. It's a little town just a bit south of Baranor. That will mean we avoid the most radioactive zones, but it won't actually take you too far off your path. And second, we also sail by day. We're not going to finish up on the lake monster's plate. And it sleeps during the day. The beast is usually a bit of a night owl. I accept, Captain Obo. In that case, all hands on deck now, sailor, because we've got work to do before we can hoist the anchor. Come on, Kate. You hurry off and meet with the captain before he changes his mind. I'll go tell Grandfather to join you on board the Crystal with Kirk. Thank you, Sarah.
All right, Captain. How are the preparations going? There's quite a bit of work to do before we can hoist the anchor, Miss Kate. Maybe I can help you out with something. Well, the coal needs to be stocked up. As for myself, I'll look after getting the water tanks ready to be filled. Take this. It's the code you need for entering the hangar where the coal is kept. You actually need it to use the crane to load the coal onto the crystal. Don't forget to open the storage hatchway first. How do I open the hatchway to the coal storage on the crystal? Just turn the wheel on the ship's bridge, sailor. What do I need to do in the hangar? That's where you'll find all the coal you need for the crystal. One container should just about be enough. And don't forget to use the entry code for the crane that I just gave you. What do I need the crane for? This here is for loading all the coal you get from the hangar onto the ship. Use the code I gave you so that you can access the control post. I'll take care of that, Captain. We need to set sail as soon as possible, so better hurry up.
a folding chute, covered with coal, too.
Apparently, you did a very good job loading all the coal, Kate. Right. Everything's ready, so we can start filling the water tank. Now we need to connect the water tower to the crystal, then climb up there to manually activate the water flow mechanism. Let me guess, you're counting on me? When you're finished, come and see me on board. There's still a lot to do before we're shipshape. I took care of the water, Captain. Everything went smoothly. Is everything okay? No. The ignition key for the crystal! I can't find it anywhere! Without it, we can't even start. Come on, just relax. The key has to be around here somewhere. Good lord, now I remember. Twenty years ago, when I got back from Baranor without the automatons, everybody was really very hard on me, you know. Captain, I don't really see what you- So I spent the whole night in the tavern. You should have seen the state I was in when I got back to the Bridge of the Crystal and- And? And then I threw the crystal's ignition key into the water. I swore I'd never set sail on the cursed waters of the lake again. There has to be a duplicate for the key. I don't know. At any rate, when Steiner finished building the crystal, he only actually gave me the one. So that's it? The ignition key is lost forever? Yeah. I'm afraid so. I'm really sorry, Kate, but we're stuck. I've made a complete mess of everything again. Again. I saw a model of the crystal at Simon Steiner's. Is he the one who designed the ship? Yes, of course. Maybe he could be of some help then. Maybe. Who knows? Don't be so hard on yourself, Captain. I'll find a solution to the key problem. 
if you say so. Kate, how are the preparations with the captain coming along? We're making progress, but actually we need some help from your grandfather. Is he here? He just left for the clinic with the artificial leg he made for the Yuko guide, Kirk. I'm minding the shop until he gets back. Maybe I can help you with something? It seems the captain has misplaced the ignition key for the crystal, and without it we won't be able to leave. So as it was your grandfather who designed the crystal, I figured he just might have a duplicate. I have to admit, I don't see where you could get one of those. Apart from the model downstairs, I don't think he kept a lot of souvenirs of the time when he built the crystal. Would you mind if I had a look? Of course not. Here, take this. It'll let you look at the model close up. An ignition key. But it looks far too small for the crystal. So, 
Steiner had the time to finish the prosthesis. Perfect. The duplication worked, but I get the impression it's not the right size. Looks like it fits most of the locks on board the crystal. Don't worry. As soon as Grandfather gets back here with Kirk, I'll tell them to join you straight away on the crystal.
Fantastic, Kate. I have to admit, you really know how to get things done. Thank you, Captain. Are there any other preparations to carry out? There's just one last problem to solve. The locks we need to use to get out onto the lake. They're shut by order of the town hall. You have to find some way to get them open. What do you suggest? The best thing to do is to ask Mayor Bulyakin for the authorization to reopen them. Which just to give you fair warning, he's about as straight as a crooked water spout. So you mind him. Or you could just get a hold of some explosives and then... Kaboom! Hmm. First, I'll try talking to the mayor. Thanks, Captain. Sarah went on back to her grandfather's shop. any coins. Too bad. Looking for cigars or some hooch? I'm even cheaper than the nomads. Friends, keep calm. Please, keep calm. I beg of you. We'll calm down when we get what we want. Yeah, nomads out. Kick the Yukos Listen out to me, right please. now. I know just what you mean, my dear friends, and... It's all words. We want action. Listen, my dear friends. I'm ready to work with you to find solutions to your very legitimate concerns. And starting tomorrow, I'll receive your delegation. Yeah, you better. And don't try outsmarting us, Bulyakin. Just trust me and you will see. Come back tomorrow and together we'll find an honorable way out of this crisis. Mr. Mayor? Yes? What now? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Please forgive me for intruding like this without an appointment at all, but I'd just like to start off by saying thank you for your time. I know how precious it is. You are completely forgiven, my dear lady. How can I help? Do you think it would be possible to open the locks in the port? Hmm. I beg your pardon? Did you say the locks? 
What on earth for? I'm actually accompanying the Yukul tribe on their long journey right now, Mr. Mayor. I've asked Captain Obo if he would take us to the other side of the lake on the crystal to now dusk. Oh, Captain Obo, the crystal, the Yukuls, do go on. Anyway, it would be very ungracious of me if I were to criticize you for removing that burden from our good town. Nonetheless, I'm afraid I must refuse your request, dear lady. The locks will remain closed until further notice. This decision came from above, you understand? I... I'm really sorry to say this, Mr. Mayor, but are you absolutely certain that's the right decision? Uh, what do you mean? Well, you know that making the Yukul stay here by keeping the locks closed is clearly not what the people in your administration want. They won't understand. In the long run, there could be backlash at election time. I... Now that I think about it, yes. You are right. And I have always been there for my voters. But the orders... They're orders, understand? You're the mayor. And it's you and you alone who can decide what's right for Valsumbur. So why not reassert your authority once and for all? Authorize the opening of the locks. I could do it, of course. But it's complicated, understand? Open your eyes and see past your regulations and petty procedures. Don't you see that the fate of the Yukul caravan depends on your decision? If they don't come with me as soon as possible, their ostriches will lose patience and try to swim across the lake. It'll be a disaster. The entire herd could drown. Hmm. Well, I have to admit, dear lady, that your arguments have convinced me. I am authorizing you to open the port lock so the crystal can leave. Nonetheless, you should know that there is a technical problem that means the locks have to be opened manually. I imagine that such an inconvenience isn't likely to deter a woman as determined and resourceful as you. Do you mean that? Yes, as the local technician is absent, I'm afraid you'll have to delve into the murky waters yourself to open the locks. Nonetheless, this should help you use the underwater mechanism. But how am I supposed to dive? That, dear lady, is your problem, I suppose. Do have an excellent day. Thank you.
well. The mayor agreed to let us open the locks, but one of us is going to have to go down into the port to activate the mechanism manually. Hmm. We have all the equipment we need in the shed at the end of the seawall. But you'll have to be the one who goes, miss. As you can see, my keel's been hauled too many times for that. I've never gone diving. But if you think I'll be fine down there, I don't mind trying. This has to stay between the two of us, Kate. There's something you need to know about the locks. They're also there to stop the lake monster from entering the port. Anyway, that's what I heard. But at this time of day, there's no risk. That spawn of hell sleeps all day. Do you really believe there's a monster down there in that lake? You know, 20 years ago, it really wasn't Baranor that I was afraid of. Of the deaths, the radiation. That's what people say, but the truth is that it was actually that damn monster that made me scoot away like a minnow. It was lurking around Paranor, drawn by the stench of the graves, probably. I saw its red eyes staring at me, Miss Walker. That's something you never forget. Where's a suit I can use? Meet me in the shed at the far end of the seawall. There should be something just about your size. I mean, near enough, anyway. Underwater? How am I supposed to open the lock gates? They're kept in place with some kind of steel locks. Just try and pull them out using their mechanism. All right. There's nothing to it. Meet me in the shed at the end of the seawall. I opened the shed for you. Pressure required. Mm. 
Nothing. I must have forgotten something. Nothing. I must have forgotten something.
earth could have left these marks? Well done, Kate. I could not have done better myself. Well, if everything's ready, I'll go and get the Yukels right away. In the meantime, I'll go and make sure that everything's all set. By the time you come back here with the Nomads, we'll just have to cast off. Perfect. I'll see you later, Captain. <laughs>